Aloha mai kako, a common body curtain call, a program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. Maui artists always rise to a theme, and the latest show at the Hui Noiau Visual Arts Center in Makawal beneath the surface, Marine Life of Hawaii, is yet another example of this outstanding characteristic. This exhibit celebrates our marine biodiversity. It is a collaborative effort with the Hui's 2023 artist in residence, Gar Waterman, who, along with Jessica Kola, Director of Education for the Maui Ocean Center, were the show's jurors as well. They selected only 57 works by 46 artists. Mr. Waterman, whose father was the pioneer underwater filmmaker Stan Waterman, studied at Dartmouth, then spent seven years in Pietro Tassanta, Italy, where he learned to carve stone. He returned to New Haven, Connecticut, where he established West Rock Studio. During his six-week residency, he worked with 180 youth whose depictions of sea slugs or nudibranch are on display from Wailuku, Makawa, Pukalani, and Paia Elementary Schools A-plus after-school program. This program provides year-round weekly art instruction at no cost to students whose schools have little or no curricular art instruction and who qualify with at least 40% of students in school being low income. Here are a few of the examples of the work done by these children. Two of these have the names of the artists. This one was done by Wailuku Elementary first grader Carol Jacius, and this one also by a Wailuku first grader, Roy L. Jones. It has a free-flowing abstract approach that gives it an excitement. These other two are excellent and, unfortunately, unidentified. Mr. Waterman recruited David Fleetham, one of the world's most accomplished and celebrated underwater photographers, and Pauline Fine, a marine biologist who has two nudibranchs named for her. She is in the Divers Hall of Fame and is the owner of Mike Severn's Diving to provide photos of nudibranchs for reference. In addition, Mr. Waterman created this eoloid nudibranch sculpture from koa, keave, pheasant, acacia, and macadamia wood. Mr. Waterman tells us in his statement, quote, art inspired by nature is the longest running and successful art movement out there. He warns us, many artists, inspirations are becoming extinct because of environmental disasters. Each juror was given a juror's choice. Ms. Cola chose Jean Bitts and Natalie Young's oil on canvas with ceramics inspired by the photography of Susan O'Shaughnessy. Ms. Bitts is among our finest realistic painters. Her work consistently garners jurors' choice awards and she exhibits unlimited growth in subject matter and the skill she possesses is rare. We are fortunate to have her here. Mr. Waterman's choice was this golden poinciana wood sculpture by Dennis Holzer, depicting dolphins just below the surface entitled Following. This is a subtle but powerful work. The artist has used the grain of the wood brilliantly. Look at the curve of this one and the grain of the wood. Greeting the visitor upon entering the gallery is Kaimani Wood Carved Seal by Lucrezia Odi. Another beautiful use of the natural curvature of the grain on the, this adorable seal. Barclay Hill created this sculpture of the Humuhumu Nuku Nuku Ahu Pua'a from Curly Koa Copper Dichronic Glass. The dichronic colored glass on the fin and near the gills emphasize the otherworldly look of this, our state fish. Becky Lewis has received top award at the Art of Trash in 2022 and 2023. This fiber art lobster again demonstrates not only this extraordinary artist's attention to detail, but also her ability to work equally well in any medium she chooses. This collaboration between Michelle Schwenge Ragala and Lisa Asagi depicts a porcelain sperm whale by Ms. Asagi wrapped in a net of bathymetric wire which calibrates equipment used to map the ocean floor. It was a unique collaboration and an adorable Lilliputian sculpture of this oceanic behemoth. Quote is a humpback whale with a distinctive fluke pattern. Richard Dolan created this acrylic, the label says on sandwood, but a search to find this wood came up empty. And when I asked, is there such a wood? The answer came up as I suspected, sandalwood. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is probably on sandalwood. It is so real, 
For a moment, I wanted to call the authorities. However, I could see it was wood and a lot smaller than a real whale's tail. This glass mosaic by Monica Maracas depicts sea life that depends on healthy reefs. It is a stunning piece and placed perfectly so it glows during the day. Love Letter to the Sea is a gem by Su Yi Verkart, depicting the Hawaiian bobtail squid holding onto a bottle with a message inside. It is a work that almost leaps from the jewelry case it is ensconced within. Artist Brian Hustis created the Onaga School by using the Japanese gaiotaku technique. This is where the artist paints directly on the fish, then lays rice paper over it and rubbing it. It gives a most realistic image. Here is a companion piece to Ms. Lewis's sculpture. Tron A. Pak has painted this magnificent acrylic on canvas multicolored lobster aptly titled Somewhere Under the Rainbow. This artist shows uncommon skill, both from a technique standpoint as well as the creativity of the depiction. Jennifer Roberts Almodova has done this sensuous patinated bronze granite steel sculpture entitled Cephalopod Celebration. The piece has a softness to it that belies its material, but accurately represents the composition of cephalopods. It's a piece that stops you in your tracks and commands you look at it. Besides the work's composition, Ms. Amadova has revived a technique that was popular in the 18th and 19th centuries. The patina she has used has created an astonishing color of the bronze. Casey Lee used a photo by Kareem Elia to create this oil over graphite image of a kahola or humpback whale, a creature near and dear to Hawaii because they were born and raised here and return here annually to mate and give birth. The superb capture of this unusual orientation of this whale and the unique media are the magic in this piece. This is a mixed media work titled Shifter by Susanna Cromwell. It shows the night octopus, He'e Makoko, the chameleon of the sea, for its ability to transform according to its surroundings. This is Elizabeth Keller's watercolor and ink stamp series, Spotted Sea Creatures of Hawaii. These are actual stamp size. How Ms. Keller achieves this level of detail in such a scale attests not only to her skill as a painter, but also to her whimsical sense of creation. These relief prints by Carolyn Killauer are not a triptych, but I think they should be. They are respectively left to right ocean layers and depths, fuzzy coral in blue depths, and marine depths of blue. They work so well together, they should remain so. This acrylic ahi by James J. Knoppel looks like it is underwater. The light the artist has used animates the work, capturing the reflection of the texture of the sea above the fish masterfully. This tiptych photomicrography of marine plankton by Gwen Arkin gives a view of that which we cannot see with our naked eye. The complexity of these microscopic creatures provides a new appreciation for the viewer of not only the sanctity of life, but also the further in we go, it shows us that infinity is both within as well as without. Another rendition of the state fish, Humuhumbu Nuku Nuku Aupuaha, by Sam Magnato, captures the meaning of this creature to the Hawaiians and their culture. In the same case as Su Yi Verkhart's love letter to the sea, is this beautiful sterling silver necklace of three starfish entitled The Three Amigos by Sonny Jordan. It is stunning in its simplicity and elegance. Remarkably, there is only one depiction of a honu in this show. Jackie Johnston gave us this reduction lino cut she calls maluhia, which, as we know, like so many Olala Hawaii words, has multiple meanings, peace, quiet, tranquility, solemnity, to name a few of the emotions. And when you see a hono in the ocean, there are few creatures who move with such serenity, inspiring solemn awe. Ms. Johnston has another work in this show, Day at Night, an acrylic on canvas work shows us an octopus in motion. Her choice of color brings an unreality to the work that emphasizes the details in the octopus. This show continues until July 21st. The gallery is open 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday to Saturday. There is no admission fee, but contributions are graciously accepted. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Mahalo Nui Loa for tuning in. Next week, I'll have a review of Alexander Performing Arts Academy's production of Midsummer Night's Dream at the Aalihi Kuhonoa Creative Arts Center at Seabury Hall in Makawao. Ahui ho!